Two civil rights lawsuits filed against one mid-sized law enforcement agency. Both cases against San Marcos police spotlight its officers use of stun guns. In one incident, they used them on a person who's deaf and couldn't hear their commands. Shame on that police department for taking that type of action. It was wrong. KSAT investigates Dylan Collier sifts through what led to each altercation and examines a department that some say is badly mismanaged. But a warning, this footage may be disturbing to some viewers. <laughs> In this federal lawsuit amended in January to add more officers, Albion Leva describes the brutal excessive force and false arrest he experienced at the hands of San Marcos police just over two years ago. A backseat passenger in a car suspected of fleeing from a convenience store theft, Leva was compliant with raised hands, one holding his ID, the other his cell phone recording video. When a sergeant stepped forward, and used his stun gun to electrocute him. Cut me now! Cut me now! Case that investigates later revealed the sergeant who pulled that trigger, Ryan Hartman, had been back on duty just six weeks after a lengthy leave of absence for causing a crash in Lockhart that killed a woman. Despite speeding and having an open beer can in his truck, Hartman was never arrested or disciplined by internal affairs. I think there's this culture of impunity uh, in the San Marcos Police Department. Rebecca Weber is an Austin-based civil rights attorney representing Labor. You realize that there's really a lot of time and opportunity for all the other dudes hanging around watching to say, hey man, like don't do that, or no, it's okay, you know, he's cooperating. Of the four officers named in Leva's suit, only one of them is still employed by the department. Hartman, suspended one week for using unnecessary force during the tasering incident, was fired last year for unrelated rules violations. Jacinto Melendrez, who also tasered Leva, resigned a month after doing so, according to SMPD, to pursue other opportunities. And then there's Jordan Perkins, terminated less than two weeks after being named in the lawsuit. Officials said he had repeated rules violations. Discipline records show last March, Perkins was suspended for placing his gun against the neck and head of a suspect, and in a second incident, used his hand to strike a handcuffed suspect in the face, injuring him. When you have people with this much disciplinary history and you're still putting them out on the street and you're not reviewing their arrest records and their use of force, you're just setting up a situation where someone's rights are going to be violated. Weber represents another man who, like Leva, was on the receiving end of San Marcos PD stun guns. Big John Kelly, all six foot nine of him, was crossing a street in May 2019 when officers approached him from multiple sides and within seconds repeatedly used their tasers on him. As one officer kicked Kelly, another continued to electrocute him before all three finally realized they had taken down a person who could not hear them. Through an American Sign Language interpreter, Kelly told us he'd walked away from his family's car after having a disagreement with his wife and to this day has no idea why officers resorted to violence. Kelly was never charged or even handcuffed. Still, officers tried their best to paint Kelly as not compliant. Every time we were trying to cuff him, he was tucking his hands up underneath his chest. The false assertion was made at the scene and then repeated in each of the officers' accounts of what happened even as their own body cameras showed Kelly with his hands up by his forehead. My hands were not on my chest. I wanted to gesture to the police and show them with my hands that I wanted to write, to communicate. That's where my hands were in front of me, clearly. Kelly confirmed he's never been contacted by San Marcos Police Internal Affairs to give a statement about what happened to him. All three officers shown using force against Kelly are still employed by SMPD. Police Chief Stan Standridge and the city's mayor, Jane Houston, declined interview requests, citing the pending litigation of both cases. In November, during a tape deposition for Kelly's suit, Officer John DeCorty answered that if the circumstances dictated, it's okay to use the stun gun on someone who is elderly, very frail, or even 
What about a pregnant woman? Is it okay to t- tase a pregnant woman? Again, if the circumstances dictated, then yes. What? Hayes County prosecutors dismissed a misdemeanor interference charge against Leva last summer. His attorney is now asking the court to add a wrongful arrest claim to his suit, as well as a claim that his First Amendment rights were violated. Kelly's civil rights case is scheduled to go to trial in September. You know, when you talk about Kelly, Big John, as you called him, yeah. he, his hands are up as he's walking across. And as soon as he sees the officers, he begins to try and sign that he's deaf. That is what his normal protocol is. He's, he's uh, used to trying to communicate with people that way. As soon as he sees them, he wants them to know right away that he is deaf and he cannot hear what they're saying. Right. There we saw right there. How strong are each of these federal cases? Kelly's case is very strong. It's scheduled for trial in September. His attorneys have already gotten over a lot of those hurdles that you see uh, lead to dismissals kind of early on when lawsuits are filed against police departments. Leva's case was filed much more recently, so he has to get over some of those same hurdles, the uh, attempts at dismissal before this gets to trial or a possible settlement. And in that Kelly incident, we said at the top of the story, the video was hard to watch. It certainly is hard to watch. Any idea whether these officers had some sort of training on how to interact with someone who's deaf? All three of those officers, according to the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, had taken a four-hour course on how to interact with drivers who are deaf or cannot hear. Uh, That case is specific to interacting with drivers and not to just people in the community that you may interact with in the course of your employment. Uh, John DeCordy's course took place two months after this tasering incident, but currently all have that four-hour course. Uh, as part of their T. Cole official records. Now, you, you, I, 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 you said that internal affairs from San Marcos never contacted right. Mr. Kelly. I'm assuming they also never apologized for nope. how he was treated. And, and we asked him that, and he's, he's had no contact with them since this incident took place, whether to give his version of what happened, uh, to get a formal apology from them. Uh, We could find no suspensions of any of these officers in the Kelly case. Uh, As we mentioned, Hartman was suspended for the Leva tasering, uh, 40 hours that he was able to use vacation time to cover. But in terms of the Kelly case, the older case, nothing from SMPD. It's the type of situation where it looks like they wanted it just to go away. And he wasn't arrested, was never charged. Never handcuffed, there was no assault that took place. Someone called 911 because they saw him using sign language with his wife, who is also deaf, and this was the result. Not going away because there's video of what happened. So what comes next in these cases? So Kelly's case is just a few months from trial. Uh, This might be a situation where the city of San Marcos settles that case because there really aren't many obstacles left to try and get this tossed out. Leva, uh, we're probably a couple years, maybe several years away from getting a trial date set. Sure would have been nice if the mayor and the police chief would have weighed in on Of course. Yeah. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT.